So, today we're here to talk about these guys. I will massacre you! About a week ago, I made a video where I reviewed Deep Woken. And a few days after, I put out another video regarding a small interview I did with one of the owners of Deep Woken, Archmage. In that video, I mentioned how Voidwalkers were a consistent problem in Deep Woken, and how I wanted to make a video directly related to them. There seemed to be a lot of support when it came to me making the video, so here we are. Now, here's the thing. There were basically two extremes that I picked up on while reading comments in regards to Voidwalkers. The first and most obvious were the clearly PvE-centric players who cannot stand these guys. There appears to be a large following of people who just flat out wish the origin and style of play was never added to the game to begin with. Then of course, there's the other group of people, the people absolutely terrified that this random jackass from YouTube who just showed up on their favorite game now wants to make a big public deal about how the way they enjoy the game is actually ruining the game. I bring up these two extremes mostly because contrary to what people seem to think I was going to say in this video, I actually fall more in the middle of the two of them. I genuinely believe that Voidwalker was a really good idea and concept. The problem was more in the execution of that concept. The origin has a laundry list of problems tied to it that makes something that otherwise could be a really fun addition to the game simply an incredibly frustrating nuisance for a lot of players. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at two major problems with Voidwalkers that I believe, if fixed, can make the Voidwalker origin more fun for both the PvE players and the PvP players. So the first big issue is obtainment. Uh, and to put it bluntly, whoever designed this is a sadist, plain and simple. For those who may not know, in order to obtain the Voidwalker origin, you need to randomly kill 15 players for no reason. Now yes, you could just kill people as they come, kill Voidwalkers themselves, and so on, but considering that you need to kill all 15 players on one character, realistically, most people are just gonna murder 15 people unprovoked. Funnily enough, I actually think that the obtainment method for Voidwalker does more harm overall than the actual Voidwalkers themselves. And that's because, whether the devs intended it to or not, you are heavily incentivized to hunt down and kill new players and players who are a lower level than you. Here's the deal. If you're not really good at PvP and you fight people that are on your level, there's a good chance you're gonna lose. If you do, then screw up in your depth trial or get jumped down there and you get wiped, well, you're back to square one. That means that the safest route here is to mercilessly slaughter those beneath you. This is all ignoring the fact that the wiki says that you specifically have to kill Pathfinders, or players with no current oath, which, if this is true, even further encourages killing low levels, because most high levels are already going to have an oath, and so it wouldn't count. I hope this isn't true, but if it is, what the fuck? I have never in my life, across all the games I've played, felt as bad as I did for the people I was killing in order to unlock Voidwalker. I felt like I was handing out apologies like hotcakes over the top of entirely confused and heartbroken players that I'd just killed who had little to no chance of winning against me. And it's at this point I have to wonder, why? Did the devs just arbitrarily pick kill 15 people as a prerequisite without any sort of backing or forethought whatsoever? Frankly, I'm not sure. But what I can say is that it really shouldn't be this way. You get the deep bound origin by talking to a guy twice and the lone wanderer for killing three enemies in the trial of one. Something that itself is probably likely to change and get even easier. So why is it that Voidwalker is so obnoxious to get that compared to the rest of the origins in the game and cause so much strife for people for basically no reason. The only answer that I can come up with is they made it this way in order to cut down on the amount of Voidwalkers. But if that's the case, I can't say much other than that being incredibly short-sighted. And it also didn't work. If Voidwalker's main way of progressing is fighting other players in PvP, and the Voidwalker origin itself is restricted to only those who are already adept at killing people, 
then that makes every encounter with a Voidwalker as a newer player borderline or just straight up impossible. This weeds out all of the otherwise bad Voidwalker players, making most if not all Voidwalker encounters and as a new player a complete one-sided slaughter. If it were me, I'd drastically lower the bar for unlocking Voidwalker by either only requiring one or hell maybe even zero kills and center unlocking the origin around talking to the person below the deck on the ship and walking into the magic bubble. Cause like, I just don't see any reason why this interesting aspect of playing the game should be locked behind such a ridiculous task that isn't really very much fun to do, but is incredibly unfun for every single person on the receiving end because most of them are never even going to have a chance to begin with. So it's very obvious that the Voidwalker origin was heavily inspired by invaders from the Dark Souls series. Anyone who's played Dark Souls can easily see the comparison. And yet, despite that, the developers of Deepwoken appear to have just almost copy-pasted the system without thinking about the differences in genre and the impact of death when it comes to both games. If an invader kills you in Dark Souls, he takes your humanity and you respawn at the last bonfire. Depending on when it happens, this can be pretty annoying, but not the end of the world. In contrast, if a Voidwalker kills you in Deepwoken, it can mean being sent to the depths where you have the potential of losing your entire character. Obviously, the difference in stakes here are staggering. So you may be asking yourself right now, what is this guy getting at? Well, to put it simply, I think the devs have gone in the complete wrong direction when it comes to how they've been handling the Voidwalker issue. And to my knowledge, they have been attempting to rectify the issue. It's just not working, like at all. The cycle appears to be as follows. People complain that Voidwalkers are annoying and are making the experience less fun for those who are not a Voidwalker or don't want a PVP. The devs see these complaints and their response is to continuously make it more and more difficult for Voidwalker players, which in turn raises the skill floor to use Voidwalker, an approach that I've already explained in the previous section, simply results in the average Voidwalker player being significantly better than your average normal player and leading to most Voidwalker fights, especially early on, being just the Voidwalker wiping the floor with the victim, and that's that. None of this fixes the baseline issue that a Voidwalker can just teleport right to you, kill you, and potentially wipe your character. This is why I propose that we go in the complete opposite direction of what the devs have been attempting so far. Rather than constantly punishing Voidwalkers for even daring to pick the Voidwalker origin, why don't we just make the consequences of being Voidwalked on significantly reduced? My solution is relatively simple. Instead of Voidwalker bounties being identical to normal ones, where you seek out and kill the target, instead, if you accept a bounty from the Void Heart, the goal is to drain the life of your bounty to fuel the existence of the Void Mother, or some other thing related to that. It functions nearly identical to your standard bounty, but the goal ends when you knock out your target rather than killing them. When you knock out your target, you teleport back to the Void Heart and be able to collect your reward, with the affected player maybe suffering a small debuff for a short period of time, just so that there's some sort of consequence for losing to the Voidwalker. I believe this would radically change the dynamic and reaction when it comes to being Voidwalked on. Right now, PvP is so risky and de-incentivized for newer players that a lot of the time, players choose to either attempt to flee the Voidwalker or just straight up log out of the game if they see one coming. Neither of those things are fun for anyone involved. It's not fun to try to run away from someone hopelessly, and it's not fun for the Voidwalker to be trying to chase after someone who's directly trying to avoid them, and it's incredibly unfun to have to quit out of the game when you see a player approaching you, and it's even less fun on the receiving end of it when you're going after your target, they see you, and just Alt F4 and they're gone. I think if you're not heavily punished for losing to a Voidwalker, it means that more newer people will put up a fight, which is more fun for them, and more fun for the Voidwalkers. On top of that, it'd mean that if a Voidwalker takes a contract where the target has friends or guildmates in the server, they can realistically carry out the contract by chipping down their target 
and then they get teleported away when the target's knocked out. Considering that right now, if you're a Void Walker, it's pretty much a death sentence to pick a contract that involves a larger guild, because you're just gonna get ganked, and even if you successfully knock out your target, there's no way in hell the people are gonna let you kill them, so it's basically a lost cause. Naturally, of course, if the Void Walker themselves loses to their intended target, they'll still take a death as normal, since they're the initiator of the conflict, often have the element of surprise, and also likely will have a much easier time getting out of the depths than their target, based solely off the fact that if you've gotten Void Walker and you're trying to PvP, you probably have a good idea of getting out of the depths by now. There are some small issues with Voidwalker that I wanted to mention that just weren't big enough to be in those two large sections above. So I'm putting them here instead. The first of which is simply conjecture, and I can't prove it whatsoever, but I had someone tell me that Voidwalker's depth trials are harsher than other origins. Obviously, this falls into the same idea that I mentioned before of not punishing people directly for picking the Voidwalker origin. Assuming this is true, it really shouldn't be and doesn't make a whole lot of sense. The next is about outright avoiding Voidwalkers. Apparently the Voidwalker issue is so widespread that people have gotten to the point of figuring out how to just not appear on the Voidwalker bounty board at all. By becoming neutral or allies with every faction, I think. Assuming that the punishment for losing to Voidwalker has changed, I really think something like this is pretty stupid and ought to be done away with. The Voidwalker bounty board should always show everyone on the server no exceptions. One of the other things I felt needed to be said is that I think a lot of people play Voidwalker specifically because it gives you access to cool stuff that no other origin can do. And I think that a large issue with Voidwalker actually spawns from the fact that the other origins just don't feel as special or are boring comparatively. The fact of the matter is, a power 20 Voidwalker just has access to more unique stuff than a power 20 Deepbound or Castaway. So for older players, it's almost a no-brainer to pick Voidwalker. There's not very many reason to pick the other origins if you're already good at the game. It gives you a chance to get into more PvP fights if you want to, and if you don't, no big whoop, you lose some XP, but so be it, you get some cool stuff in, as a trade-off. I think if the developers went out of their way to make Deepbound and whatever future origins are coming provide cool and unique reasons to pick them that are kind of on par with Voidwalker, then there would be less Voidwalkers overall, as people would actually weigh their options instead of unlocking Voidwalker and going, well, I'm gonna pick that one because it gives me the cool teleporting abilities that nobody else has. And the last thing isn't really important, but it goes against everything people kept telling me. To put it simply, towns are not safe. I don't know what people are smoking, but the guards in towns are often completely incapable of dealing with a Voidwalker. And if the Voidwalker knocks any of them out, they get health back, actively punishing you for trying to rely on the guards for help. I don't think this will really matter if the Voidwalkers don't outright kill you, uh, and if anything, the guards should almost be easier, so that way it's less of a problem for Voidwalkers having to deal with guards. But I thought I'd mention it, because there were several times where I, and I'm sure there's footage in the background, where I would try to gank the Voidwalker with the help of guards, and I would end up hurting myself because the guards would get knocked out, the Voidwalker would get all their health back, and they just would be completely unfazed by all of it. In conclusion, this video was probably a complete waste of time. Wait, what? No, it's not like a YBA video where everything that I say is falling on deaf ears. Actually, quite the opposite. After my second Deep Woken video last week, Archmage and I talked again in DMs, and the topic of Voidwalkers was brought up because, well, I'd mentioned it in the video. I said a few things in there to him, and we seem to be pretty eye to eye on everything that came to the issue. I even basically stole his idea for how Voidwalkers would complete contracts without killing you from him. So that begs the question, if I already talked about this with him and the message is already conveyed, why does this video exist? Well, um, uh, listen. 
But on the real, there's quite a bit in here that I didn't directly mention to him. And I also wanted to actually get and use Voidwalker before making a video about it. If I hadn't, that whole deal about obtainment would probably never have existed to begin with, and I think it's really important. As for being a Voidwalker itself, I haven't really played too much of it, so hopefully I'm not missing too much before this goes live. I wanted to get the video out within a reasonable time frame, and so I'm kind of rushing things out the door right now. So there is a relatively decent chance that I miss some important stuff that I'll regret later. I'm hoping that's not the case. If it is, please let me know below so that way I can either amend it, reference it to Archmage, whatever because I think this stuff is important, and I also don't think it'd be that hard to fix. So if you've got things that I missed, let me know. Anyways, I am done here. That's all I had to say on the issue. Hopefully the devs can consider some of this stuff because I think it'd make the game healthier overall, both for new players and old players alike. But that's all for today. So if you enjoyed the video, you can leave a like and subscribe. If you didn't, don't. And with all that being said, have a wonderful day or night wherever you are, and I'll see you guys next time.